my name is Chelsea Gardner, and I'm going to be doing my first vlog on the short story Lullaby by Leslie Marmon Silko. I think this story focuses on the major losses in Aya's life, and she blames all these losses on the white people or Americans. The first loss that she had was that of her eldest son, and his name was Jimmy. He was in the army, and I think this quote really sums up how Aya viewed the loss. She didn't cry then, but she hurt inside with anger. I think this quote shows how she coped with Jimmy's loss, how she didn't really um, process that he was actually dead, and she more blamed his not being there on the white people because she was angry at them. The second loss that she encountered was the loss of her children, Danny and Ella. I'm assuming that the children were taken away because the government thought their home wasn't suitable for children to live in. And also it does mention that they may have contracted some kind of disease from an elderly woman. And this quote I think really sums up how she felt about that situation. It was worse than if they had died. But she could not bear this pain. She did not sleep for a long time after they took her children. I think it's really interesting that she seems to show more sadness at the loss of these two children rather than the death of her oldest son, Jimmy. The last loss she endured was a loss of her husband's job in their home. This loss didn't really bother Aya very much, but I think, in fact, she seems glad that it happened so that she could prove a point to Chato, and I think this quote really sums up how she feels about it. That had satisfied her, to see how the white man repaid Chato's years of loyalty and work. I think this quote kind of shows a I told you so moment. It shows how little faith she has in the white man to be civil and to repay the Navajos for everything that they have done. Aya's view of the white race is very pessimistic. She thinks that nothing good can ever come from them. She learns to sign her name in their language and writing, and that ends up costing her her two youngest children. He had taught her to sign her name because it was like the old ones always told her about learning their language or anything of their ways. It endangered you. I think this quote really sums up Aya's outlook of white culture and language and white people just in general. Another quote from the text that is interesting is about the hawk. Dark wings gliding, hunting or only watching. The hawk was patient and he circled all afternoon. This quote is symbolic of especially the white people who were trying to take her children, but also just white people in general. She felt as if they were always watching her and waiting for their chance to attack or steal her children or her land, and she seems to be very paranoid, paranoid about this. The ending, I think, could be interpreted in multiple ways, but I interpreted it as Chato and Aya freezing to death. And this is one quote that really led me to think that. She recognized the freezing. It came gradually. And then another quote that really made me think that was the lullaby that she sang at the very end the earth is your mother she holds you the sky is your father he protects you sleep sleep rainbow is your sister she loves you the winds are your brothers they sing to you sleep sleep we are together always we are together always there never was a time when this was not so i think the repetition of the word sleep in this lullaby is kind of foreshadowing death because we talked about in class that sleep often is a metaphor for death. Overall, I think this short story was a pretty easy read and I enjoyed it. I'm excited to hear your thoughts and interpretations. Thank you.